So, hi, everybody. My name is Mike Wilson. I'm a product designer. Um, I recently joined Stripe to work on their documentation experience team. So documentation is kind of my world at this, at this time. Um, prior to Stripe, I was working on a design system at an awesome company called Seismic. Um, it was a great team over there, and we were looking to up-level our documentation, which is around the time um, I started talking with people about how to distribute our documentation within Figma, um, and the idea for GIST came up. Um, and so today, hopefully, I'll be able to make the case about why you all as design system maintainers and builders should take the time to distribute your documentation within Figma. So let's jump into it. What does distributed documentation mean, right? Like you might be saying, my, my, my website is already on the web. Isn't that already distributed? And that's absolutely true, if that's the case, right? But for the context of today's talk, what, what I'm talking about is distributing it within Figma, distributing it within the same surface that your designers are working in, right? Um, we could talk about the greater ecosystem of distributing our documentation so that you know it's somewhere available everywhere, VS Code, Figma, uh, Sketch, no matter where you are, you know, your documentation has a facet where it's available. Um, and that's something that we're reaching towards. And I think GIST was kind of a step towards such an ecosystem, right? It's a just a tiny step towards distributing our documentation in a way that it's available when we need it. And it's free from the surface with which you're viewing it on. So for today's talk, we're talking about how can we effectively distribute our documentation within Figma. Um, so that kind of came in that or just is kind of a step towards such an ecosystem, right? And so the idea behind just maybe you've heard of it before, maybe you haven't seen anything of it, but the idea behind just is that you could, as a design system maintainer, go into your team library, click on one of your components, attach or write your documentation um, to that component so that when your designers are in their working file, they can just click on the components and immediately pull up the documentation to find things like usage guidelines, rules, et cetera, right? Um, and this is really handy because it's just immediately available within their working surface. So to kick this off, uh, let me start with a story that I would bet is familiar to a lot of people here. However, I know for certain that it's really familiar to myself. Um, you're working in Figma, you're jamming on some cool project, maybe you're using a design system off the community, or perhaps you're using a design system from your company. Um, you're throwing components around and you're building something pretty darn cool. When all of a sudden you encounter a component you haven't used before, or perhaps it is a component you've used before and you haven't used it in this way. Um, you know for certain that your design system maintainers have written guidelines for this thing, you don't know where those guidelines are, right? You probably know where to find them, you know where the doc site is, but now you have to leave your awesome Figma canvas, this creative space that you were in, and you have to brave the world of Chrome tabs or even worse, infinite Figma tabs, right? We've all been there as you go through tab after tab looking for the thing you're looking for and that Figma logo spins and spins. Um, and so it just, it totally takes you out of that space and you have to dive into this exploration mode of finding the documentation. And in this story, maybe the documentation is in with it is within Figma, right? And so even once you do find the correct file, there's so, so much stuff to navigate through. Um, some design systems have, you know, self-help glossary sections or other navigation items. But even with such navigation items, it can be really hard to find the thing you're looking for. So from the time the designer needed that piece of documentation, that piece of information, to the time they got it was way too long. And the overall experience was really poor. So what does this lead to? This leads to a designer who was once in flow, totally out of flow, right? Um, or even just a little bit out of flow, but either way that, that really affects us as creatives, right? As we're building these things and we get just a little bit of time in our day some weeks to actually push pixels within Figma. Um, anything that takes us out of that flow, anything we have to kind of juggle in our heads or doors that we open up towards distraction can just be really frustrating to deal with. So. How do we push towards an experience more like the one that engineers and developers receive when they're working with you know, libraries, right? I work on per personal projects with programming and as I'm integrating you know, a new JavaScript library or something, I get this awesome type ahead IntelliSense that's giving me this functional information about the uh, method that I'm introducing, right? It's giving me a description, it's giving me the parameters they expect. 
And that creates a situation where I get to stay in flow. I get to jam on my project for longer before I have to leave and go search for answers, right? And so how do we replicate that within Figma? Well, uh, my suggestion would be on an infinite canvas, we attach the documentation to the components themselves, right? And so how do we, as a designer, if we're going through, click on a component that we've never seen before, a component that we have a question on, and we pull up that documentation. Well, the only way to do that would be to distribute our documentation. There's four key benefits to distributing our documentation within Figma. These benefits extend once you uh, go further into a distributed documentation ecosystem, but for just distributing within Figma, um, I believe there are four key benefits. Number one, as I kind of just said, it meets designers in their workflow without breaking their workflow, right? Um, it answers functional questions. It saves time, right? It's another surface for you to write documentation on. So maybe you have a greater um, piece of documentation that is full of content, you can filter that down. So it's just the functional information, similar to how in the engineering example, they're not giving you every piece of information about that method. They're just giving you the functional pieces you need to integrate with it, right? This is another facet for our documentation. So we can be more concise here. It offers us another canvas with which to tell a different kind of story for our documentation. The third thing is it increases visibility of our documentation, right? Where you have rules, it creates better adherence. Where you have teams implementing documentation, it creates consistency. Um, and that's purely just due to the visibility of it, right? You, more people are seeing your docs. So of course, more people are gonna be following those guidelines and following those rules. And the fourth and final is that in a way it future proofs your documentation with Markdown, right? Um, if anything is consistent with design tools, it's the inconsistency of design tools, right? We, we are so often switching from tool to tool to whatever fits us best. And that makes a lot of sense. Um, and we can, in a way, future proof our documentation by writing it into Markdown, right? The Markdown ecosystem seems really healthy. It's only growing with tools like Obsidian um, and you know, Stripe's new Markdocs, for example. There's a lot of movement behind keeping Markdown around and keeping it around for a while. And so if you write your documentation in Markdown or take the time now to switch it to Markdown, in a way you can future-proof it so that no matter what rendering surface, what app in the future you want to view your documentation on, it's still ready, it's still good to go. Um, and when you use a program like GIST, you get three added benefits, right? On top of those four, you get to the docs instantly, right? In a setup like GIST, you're using Framer as your distribution system, your CMS almost. And so when you've pulled in the component, you've already pulled in the information for those documentations. There's no waiting for a Figma spinner to load or a Chrome tab, tab to refresh. Um, it's also styled with Markdown, right? And so um, on top of being written and future-proofed in Markdown, it's styled really nicely in Markdown in a way that looks nice and is easy to read. And, and the third uh, and final benefit you get when using a system like GIST is that you get to manage the docs with the component, right? You're building the component in the same canvas that you're writing your documentation on, and that helps you tie it into the process. That's something I'll touch on a bit more later. So hopefully, maybe at this point, we're, we're on board for distributing our documentation within Figma. Um, the benefits are clear to our designers and to our design system. So how do we create great documentation for it, right? There's been a ton of great other presentations throughout the conference about how to write great documentation. So I won't go too depth into depth about that, but I do have some recommendations for how you can distill which information to include on your components and how you can set yourself up for a great system of distributing your documentation, right? And so the number one piece that I recommend is gather the important info, right? You have a ton of, ton of info and how do we distill it out? Well, there's four steps that I would recommend to kind of identifying and gathering that info. The first step is audit your docs experience, right? We as design system maintainers spend so much time considering the UX of our components, crafting them carefully in Figma so that the properties panel is a treat to use. But how often do we audit our docs experience, right? Um, we as the maintainers so rarely get to experience a moment of confusion with our own components because we've built them ourselves. And so creating empathy experience for you as the maintainer to understand how it feels to not understand your document or your components is an important step to understand the areas 
with which you can fix your documentation, right? The third or the second is to track your design system questions, right? However you're fielding them, Slack or whatever, make sure it's in a way that, that you can index it and you can go through um, and find the common denominators from question to question. And out of those questions that you're receiving from your team, find the functional information, right? Go through them, scan them, and find which information directly relates to implementing that component and rendering it next to other components, the functional information, right? Um, and then the fourth and final is customize it for your team. Um, there's no one template of documentation that I could recommend for just because it has to be customized for your team to create the most usable uh, documentation for them. And the, I'll say it one last time, focus on the functional information, right? The only GIST integrations that I've heard of going poorly are really verbose documentation. It's the number one recommend that I give to everyone is just distill it down, right? Um, sometimes I even recommend starting with a blank documentation and just filling in questions as you, or filling in data as you get common questions, right? So um, almost treating it like a totally separate piece of documentation. But for most teams, I think it totally works to just filter your greater documentation into functional info. So if I was starting fresh, if I was starting brand new today, what four pieces of functional info would I include in a piece of uh, distributed documentation? Well, it would be these four things. Uh, first of all would be space, right? Um, what is the component's authority over its space? What are its grouping rules, things like that, right? If these components are meant to be viewed in a series, what's the spacing between them? Um, you can do this really effectively through diagrams that really easily show the margin and padding, et cetera, of your components. Um, or you can just write it out, right? The second piece would be state info, right? Don't show all your states, that's definitely not necessary. But any states that have specific callouts, any states that affect the function of the component, include that information. The third would be accessibility. Accessibility info helps to not only raise accessibility awareness on your team, but it also helps to inform the function of the component, especially for higher order components, right? Where it's maybe made up of smaller subcomponents. Um, showing something like the tab order is a great way to inform your designers as to the function of that component. And the fourth and final would be the interactivity of it. What is that component doing when you hover it, when you click it? How does it move and how does it interact on the canvas? Those are important clues to help your designers implement that component well. So uh, how do we distribute our documentation within Figma? There's two steps or there's two ways to show, I'll show you today. Uh, one obviously being GIST and the first that I'll show you is this hacky solution that kind of got me started on this path, which is um, many teams already have, and in fact, I would guess some teams in the call today already have their documentation sitting next to their components in the Figma canvas, right? Why not turn those frames that's holding the documentation into components and distribute them through your team library? The UX of searching for buttons, grabbing that card out, reading it and deleting it is certainly better than the UX described before of having to dive into Chrome tabs. This is hacky, obviously, you know, I, I, there's other solutions out there, but this is a great first step towards maybe auditing if distributed docs is for your team, um, figuring out what info is usable or not before you commit to a plugin like GIST. Or the other option obviously is to use GIST. So let's give that a try. Um, we'll do a quick demo today. So jumping into a Figma canvas, I've zoomed in a bit and hopefully it's close enough, but if I need to zoom in further, please let me know. Um, and so, in this case, we have a buttons component and a set of button components next to their documentation on a Figma canvas, right? And so we're kind of imagining the situation of maybe I am a first time uh, on board to GIST and I'm trying out setting up my, um, my component with distributed documentation. So I'll activate the GIST plugin. I need to select a layer for it to attach its documentation to. So I'll select the component and I'll get this writing window, right? It's the component has no documentation now, so it's empty. And I just get this empty writing window and just has this awesome fun drop down that you can activate with either this plus or more conveniently with a forward slash on your keyboard. And very similar to something like Notion, you get this great drop down and you can start to write out your documentation in this way, right? Um, and it can actually be pretty quick to 
kind of fly through little pieces of documentation like this within just because like, especially once you're onboarded to the markdown rules it just goes quick to you know kind of type these um, and what I'll do actually since this frame is sitting here I'll just copy and paste some of the info over like that and you can see for the numbered ones it'll keep it for the bullets it won't keep it um, but it's not too hard to add it back in and if I select a line, I get this handy popover menu. And so I can just quickly attach. Okay, I wanted that one to be in a list. Great. And one more. Great. So you can kind of see how quickly that can go, right? It's not crazy fast certainly not like some super fast hack or something, but it is quicker than um, some of the other solutions I've seen out there, right? It's quicker than having to leave your Figma doc and go document it elsewhere. And it has the added benefit of being in the same context that I'm working on this component. in. So let's go ahead and now attach this these docs to this component. So I've copied that, I've reselected the docs, and I'm gonna hit save. And the way it just works um, is that it attaches a hidden layer to that component. So if we can find that component in the uh, layers here, you can see this hidden metadata layer. Well, why isn't it attached to the plugin properties, right? We could fully hide this information. Um, I do this only because your documentation is pretty important to you. If you're gonna spend the time writing all of it out, I wanna make sure that it's available to you always. And so the nice thing about having, hiding it on a text layer rather than plugin data is that if anything went wrong with the plugins, maybe you didn't have access to internet, what, whatever the may re reason may be, you can come to this hidden layer, hit control enter, and you can just reselect all of your documentation and copy it out. So it's, it's always available for you. The other cool piece and a couple tips I'll throw out uh, while working with GIST is that you can add images and GIFs. Um, a great method to do this is Gazo GIFs has this easy to use copy markdown thing where you just come in and you copy the markdown and then you paste it in and easy peasy, you have an example in your docs, right? And you could, you could change the, the caption to no new loading states or something like that, right? And then when we save it, anywhere that that button component is viewed, now we'll load in this example of what it does on loading, which is nice. It's really great for interactions. Um, the other tip I'll give is when working with variant corrals, rather than having to select all your components, just select the corral itself. And these components are already documented. And you can see that, you know, maybe I'll change this info notice to a warning. And so as I, oops, as I view these, right, uh, sub components, it updates. An interesting thing you can do with variant corrals is um, select one of the particular buttons. So maybe we'll select this yellow one and we can write something pr particular to this one. So maybe yellow rules, we'll save it. So now when I view, you know, like uh, the purple one, oops, apparently it is gonna go through all of them. It should only, yep, yeah, there we go. Just needed to restart just. So if I view the yellow component, I have these yellow rules. Um, and if I view the purple one, I don't have that info. So that's a great way to attach only component specific information to components, even if they're in the same variants. Um, so, oops, that was quick, um, but it wasn't super fast, right? Documenting takes time. It's not a crazy fun part of the process. It's why it often doesn't get a lot of love. So despite those reasons before, and despite how cool some of this stuff can be, um, how do we how do we do this well, right? How do we make sure that our team has great distributed documentation, maintains that documentation, and how do we get the best long-term results? Well, we make it part of the process. It has to be part of the process. Um, it has to be the same level of quality of craft that we put everything else um, in our component creation process, right? Um, we as design system builders put a lot of pride into the quality of components and everything else. Why shouldn't their supporting documentation receive the same level of love and the same quality of designer experience, right? 
So that on that note of designer experience, what makes great documentation? What makes great distributed documentation? Um, I don't know. I couldn't claim to answer that. Um, there are way better people to ask than myself. Um, but for me and the teams I've worked with, great documentation and meets me in my workflow, right? It's functional information that keeps me in that creative headspace that I want to be. Um, bad documentation takes me out of my workflow and I have to leave and go search for it. And great documentation meets me where I want to be. And so on that note, I just wanted to say, oh, I'm not sure that slide should be blank. Let me see. Maybe there's something in the documentation here. Oh, there is. Cool. <laughs> That's cheesy, but thank you all so much for letting me show you this plugin. Let me show you how to distribute your documentation within Figma. Um, something I'm really passionate about, and I'm always happy to chat about it. So if you want to connect with me, please find me on Twitter at under, or MK underscore WLSN, Mike Wilson with Help of Vowels. If you want to check out GIST plugin, um, you can go to gist-plugin.com. I'm happy to answer questions on Twitter or through Figma community. Um, yeah, thanks so much, everybody. This was a treat.